Todd White has been an encouragement to me, an inspiration <clears throat> to me, uh, like a big brother to me. And though I have seen traveling with him, the deaf hear and scars vanish from people's bodies, the thing I love most about him is his consistently laying his self aside that Christ may be glorified. Uh, I picked a scripture for this time together and it's Second Peter chapter 3. It says, grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and to the day of eternity. It was Oswald Chambers who said, spiritual maturity is not reached by the passing of years, but by obedience. Some people mature into an understanding of God's will more quickly than others simply because they obey more readily. And I picked those two uh, things to start out with because they remind me of Todd and how his heart has just been abandoned to Christ for many years now. So, Todd, thanks so much for jumping on with me. Yeah, man. I, I love you. You are my... <laughs> You are my picture of intimacy. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, man. You're you're one of the most joyful people, lovers of Jesus that I've ever met in my life, man. I, am I, I want to be like you. I want to be like you. I'm envious of your beard, though. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's it's pretty great. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Yeah, so, I love it, man. Let me ask you. You've been walking with the Lord for years now. Yeah. And what's some of the things that you learned in the very beginning that have kept you through the years? Yeah, well, um, woo. <laughs> knowing, knowing him, um, you know, ever since I got saved, my, you know, I couldn't read when I got saved. And so when I got born again, I went away to Teen Challenge. The Bible became the first book I can read in my whole life. And so when, I, when I'm reading the scriptures, I'm, I'm knowing him more. And when I'm in the scriptures and I'm eating, eating the word, I'm eating living bread, which makes my heart and my soul come alive. Man. And so for me, it's, it's making sure that I stay full on living bread continually drinking that living water and tapping into that well that's in me and making sure that I spend my life in communion with Jesus. Um, there's never been a day that's gone by since I've been saved for 17 years that I haven't spent time with him. <laughs> and, and as I, as I'm growing more and more, because every day is mercy's new. So today I will be, stronger than I was yesterday yes. in the Lord, because I will be weaker in the flesh and stronger in spirit. And so I'm going to grow today tremendously. And each, every opportunity that we have, no matter what it is, no matter what kind of trial you're facing, is another opportunity to manifest him and not you. Wow. So as I'm growing in the word and, and focusing on the renewing of my mind, Renewing your mind doesn't just happen when you're reading scripture. Mm -hmm. Renewing of your mind happens when you devour scripture and when mm -hmm. you're in there and you see Jesus in everything you read. Man. And so I'm always, always, always an advocate of making sure that you spend time away with him. You know, you sent me that, uh, that song, Jonathan McReynolds, I think his name is. And it was, I'll, make room yeah. and I cried so hard because <laughs> it says that I I find time for what I treasure I'll, I'm going to find time for what I want and he's talking about priorities and he says Jesus you are my yes. priority Whew. <laughs> I will make room for you I will make room for two and so that is the essence of consistency because if you're if you're intimate with jesus you can't help but to be consistent but if you're 
not intimate with Jesus, then you're intimate with the world. Mm -hmm. So you cannot be one. You can't be both. You can't be intimate with the world and intimate with him. If you're intimate with him, your flesh becomes crucified and you no longer live. But the life you live, you live by faith in the one that gave himself for you. In Galatians, it says crucified to the passions, lust of this world so that I can actually be one with him. But you can't be one with him and one with the world. You know, first John talks about the reality of loving the world and loving God. And he says, you cannot, you know, in, in Matthew six, he's talking about mammon. And he said, you can't love God and money, but you can't love God and anything. You love God, (laughs) period. That's it. But your love for God is demonstrated in the actions that you have because of the intimate life that you live. And you cannot, you can't grow in God unless you actually meet him. You have to encounter him. You have to experience him. And God doesn't want you to just be a, gosh, God doesn't want you to look at him. Like he's not looking at you as a concubine. Like he's looking at you as a bride. And so you're not just a one night stand. You're an everyday expression of Jesus on this earth and we need to have the handprint of God upon our life and it only comes by you know Moses meant to met with God face to face but that word face to face is actually translated in mouth to mouth so Mm -hmm. Moses met with God mouth to mouth you know when it says when Jesus said that this is eternal life that you might know him the one and only true God and Jesus Christ the one whom you have sent that word no actually is the same word as Adam knew Eve, which is intimately they knew each other. So we are supposed to know God intimately. You know, for guys, when we, you know, when we hear, uh, you know, you're supposed to know God intimately, it's weird because God, you know, it's like the male, God is male, God mm-hmm. is spirit, God is spirit. So we're supposed to know him and commune with him in a place where we would commune with our wife but it's not a sexual Mm -hmm. it's a spiritual encounter and we need to be in that place otherwise life doesn't work well so that would be the reality of like i would say intimacy equals consistency Mm. that's because the level of your intimacy is the level of your consistency and honestly we all get hit with stuff so no i say it all the time you know when you squeeze an orange you get orange juice and you squeeze an apple and you get apple juice. And if you squeeze an apple into a cup and you drank it and it was orange juice, it would be totally weird. But a Christian without intimacy gets squeezed and everything but Jesus comes out. Wow. And it ought not be that way. That's beautiful. So it's been 18 years now, you said, right? 17. Yeah. So what in the midst of your growing in grace and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus in these 17 years, do you see today that you didn't necessarily see at first? Um, I knew, I knew the importance of spending time alone with God. Like when I first, you know, you see the scripture and says, if you, you seek your father in secret and your father in secret, when he sees you in secret or will reward you in the open. And when I first started, going into the closet because I was at Teen Challenge and I would just go in the prayer room in the morning by myself early in the morning before the day started. I had no idea where to read. I had trouble reading, had trouble concentrating. So I would just flip Russian roulette to wherever (laughs) I was going to go that day. And then wherever the page landed, I would read. And man, if it lands in Leviticus, then it's a hard day. If it lands, you know what I'm saying? And so I, I didn't know where to go. Now, like I've moved from the place of having nowhere to go, nowhere, you know, and not even knowing how to read the, the Bible. So I'd look at the index and I'd look at the glossary and I'd look at all these different things to try to find where I got to go. So now it's really easy to navigate. Um, <laughs> but now it's different. Like it used to take me, it used to take time in order to enter into his presence. <laughs> so it would take Maybe it would take me 45 minutes to sense, to be aware of him. Mm. Now, now, when I go to sleep at night, it says in Genesis, 
It says in Genesis, it says God created the evening and the morning. And it actually says it's one day. So your day starts the night before when you go to sleep. So that's the day in the biblical, the biblical day. My night, my night has turned into the beginning of my day. So when I go to sleep, I'm going to sleep on the chest of Jesus. Mm. And when I wake up, I'm waking up from the chest of Jesus to go into my bathroom, to head straight to my closet, to close the doors, to know that he's already with me when I go there. So it's the conscious awareness wow. of his presence consistently to where I don't have to try to discern where are you. And even though he's in us and he'll never leave us, there's a difference between the manifest presence mm -hmm. and just the presence that you know that he's there. I don't want to just know him that he's there. I want to sense that he's here mm -hmm. on a consistent basis. Um, when I would go into malls or grocery stores or walmarts whatever and i started praying for the sick i would just go out there and pray for as many people as i could um i would pray for actually an average of about 10 people a day and for about 900 and some people before i saw my first miracle i never felt anything there wasn't a tangible feeling and honestly it it probably it was probably 15 years wow. of not i would feel goosebumps here and there i would now it's an active, now it's an active, like when I turn my affection, mm. <laughs> like right, <laughs> just like that, <laughs> he's just here. When I turn my affection towards him, he's here. Like I can feel him on my neck and all the way down my arms and it, I'm starting to feel a heat on my left side. It's just started. I'm in my prayer chair in the morning and I'm praying and I feel a heat all the way down my left arm. It feels like a, a it feels like a sun is shining on my skin. But I there's nothing there except it's him. And I'm like, God, I I want to know what you're doing. Like I just want to know. Like a little kid, I've never grown up. I've gotten younger, it seems like, in <laughs> in my heart, in that just the joy of spending time with him has become fascinating to me. And I, I fight for, I fight for time mm. to be alone with him. When I'm my schedule is cranking and I'm going and there's three meetings a day and all that, and they'll say, well, can you do one more meeting with leaders? I say, no, because if I don't meet with him, I have nothing to give anybody. That's why I prioritize that. But now it's just different. The presence, the manifest presence. And you've helped me tremendously in this, man. Because I remember just conversations even a year ago where you were like, you need to drink. You need to drink. And I'm like, I so struggled with the whole drinking thing because I'm like, gosh, do the alcoholics drink? You know, I, <laughs> I just so struggled. And like, and for me... I just, as the deer <laughs> panteth for the water, so my soul thirsts. Yes. And thirst means drink. Yes, and so all these things just hit me. <laughs> and I'm like, holy mackerel, like I'm ready to drink. Like, Lord, I'm ready. Jesus said, all of them who are thirsty come to me <laughs> and I will give them living water. Come, the woman at the well, same thing. Give me a drink. And that's that's really where it is. Staying full, staying profusely full so mm -hmm. that you can give out of overflow, but not neglecting the manifest presence. <laughs> and it's so important. So now it's shifted to going into my prayer room and he's already there. Praise he's God. waiting for me. Like I left the bed, he was there. <laughs> I go into the prayer room and he's there with, waiting for me. And he just wants me to celebrate him. I've also moved from a place of going in to that prayer room to that time of being with him for him to minister to me i've i've moved from that to me ministering to him <laughs> and i realized that it's not just about what i can 
I, I never have asked him for stuff. I've not ever gone in there. Hey, Lord, I need this. And I need you to do this. And I need, I just always believe if I seek first the kingdom and his righteousness, all things will be added to me. But there's a place that has shifted for me over the last couple of years of being in a place of, of ministering to the Lord and just being there to minister to him. And the thing is, is he doesn't need it. I do. Like he doesn't need it. It's not like he needs another elder, uh, like 25 elders. He got like, it, it's not like that. It's not like he needs another seraphim. He could have anything that he wanted to have at any time he wants to, but it's the willing sacrifice mm -hmm. of a Christian son or daughter to minister to their father and to just, you know, in, in uh, first Thessalonians five, I think it's verse 17. It says, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and in everything give thanks. I believe that's the best sandwich. Mm. The top layer being rejoicing always, the middle layer being pray without ceasing, and the bottom layer being in everything give thanks. This sandwich is the will of God for you. And so if we eat that on a consistent basis, I just believe that a couple of things will shift. The reality of who he is as a father will shift. A good father, one that loves us, one that never forsakes us, one that never will leave us, but one that wants to actually lead us also. And so I want to be one that's led by the spirit. I am a son. I will not be governed by flesh. I'm going to live in the spirit, man. That's beautiful. You know, there's so many different kinds of people watching this right now. Maybe a mother doing dishes, a guy in his, in his truck doing, you know, security work or construction yeah. i would love it if you'd look into their eyes in the camera and charge them give them a, a an exhortation of some what would you say to the mother washing dishes in the and the the blue collar worker or, or the or the school student yeah well god has made himself available to a priest to a preacher to an evangelist to a teacher to a domestic engineer because that's what my wife is. She's home with the babies. And she is washing dishes and doing laundry. And kids don't turn their clothes right side out and whatever. You can allow that to get you frustrated. Or you can pray as you're taking their clothes and turning it inside out. And saying, Lord, I thank you that right now you're changing mm. my child's life. And turning it to where it needs to go. Father, I thank you. I bless you, Lord. No matter where you're at, no matter what you're doing, you have access to the same presence. People say, well, I don't have enough time in the day. You pause and turn. Tozer said about a bird flying away from a window and then coming back to its nest. It's capturing the soul, harnessing your soul and bringing your soul back to that proper place. And that's beholding him. Every one of you have the chance to behold the lamb. That's what we want to do. We want to believe, we want to behold, and we want to become. And it's so important that we would behold him. Just turn your affection, just, just, just for a second. Just pause in the middle of dishes, in the middle of driving. You don't have to close your eyes, but just pause and say, Jesus, I worship you. Mm. And just shift just for a second. And just tell God how much you love him. Tell Jesus how much you love him. And it doesn't matter if you don't feel, because feelings will follow. Feelings will follow. But feelings follow faith. Yes. If feelings have to precede faith, you'll be caught living by feelings. Yes. But if feelings follow faith, <laughs> it's the healthiest place to be. So, Lord, I just thank you for that woman that's washing dishes. I thank you for that, for that worker that's working in the rest home that's watching this on her break. I thank you for that factory worker that is completely dirty from the shift that he just did that is on his way home. I thank you for that person that's in the lunchroom right now that's listening to twisted conversations in the lunchroom. I thank you that they would lift up the name of Jesus in their heart, that God, you would enable them to fly right back to home, fly right back to that nest of the Lord. God, thank you so much. Lord, we just bless these people. We thank you. And Father, I also thank you for miracles right now, mm. for healing to happen all over the world. Mm. No matter who you are, no matter where you are, 
just put your hand on that place on your body that is troubling you. Father, I thank you for brand new prostates <laughs> in Jesus' name <laughs> right now. Brand new. Jesus, brand new. Father, I thank you yes. for a brand new gallbladder in yes. Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, for brand new kidneys. Yes, you have a kidney that has blood flow being cut off to it, and the doctors want to do surgery. I thank you for that kidney having complete, healthy blood flow and full function. Thank yes, you for Lord. no issues whatsoever. Yes, Lord. Lord, I thank you in Jesus' name for brand new organs. Yes, God, thank you for digestive repair. Yes. That digestive systems are being repaired right now. That colitis is being repaired. That Crohn's is being repaired. Yes. That acid reflux is being repaired. Yes, Lord, we love you and we thank you. Yes. Father, I thank you that someone's deaf ear just popped open yes, Jesus, without Lord. even praying for it. Father, we love you. We thank you so much. We say yes. We give you glory and honor. Somebody out there uh, is an artist and has been thinking about just things that they want to draw. And mm -hmm. God's going to give you specific direction. For one, I heard specifically cartoonists mm -hmm. that God, God has put the idea of cartoon inside of you, that you're supposed to go for it. And you're supposed to just go after it with everything. Another artist is an actual um, interior designer mm -hmm. to where I see you just putting different curtains together and different fabrics together. And at the same time, when I said the word fabric, you thought I'm supposed to be a fashion designer. Uh -huh. So Lord, I thank you in Jesus name that you would have your people step into the creativity that they were created for. Yes. God, we love you. There's a songwriter that's stumped right now and what comes next. I believe your next, your next verse will start with the word glory. God, thank you. In Jesus name, Lord, we thank you. 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 God, thank you for complete wholeness. Again, back to healing. God, thank you for brand new hearts and, and brand new or brand new organs, brand new lungs. Lord, thank you that COBD, PD is being healed right now in Jesus name. Yes. Lung cancer is being healed right now. Yes. In Jesus name. I thank you father for blood disorders being healed right now in Jesus name. Lord, you're so good. Yes. Lord. We love you. God, I thank you for complete wholeness. You are so good. <laughs> Jesus. We thank you. We thank you. Wow. I really heard in my heart that you have a Facebook addiction, wow. that that thing is being broken off so that you can actually find time to make room for two, <laughs> that you would pull away to find time to make room for two. Jesus, we thank you. We love you. We give you glory. Somebody, somebody was thinking about ending their life because they broke up. Their girlfriend broke up with them. And they don't think that they can go on. I would like to tell you that God is redeeming your life right now mm. in Jesus name. Jesus and name. joy is going to start to flood your soul. And a warmth is going to come right behind your ears, on the back of your head, down your neck, and the whole way into your chest, because God is giving you a new heart. Mm. God, we thank you in the name of Jesus. Father, you're so wonderful. Well, that's weird. I saw a rollerblading accident that that hurt your left knee and you absolutely, absolutely twisted it out. Father, I thank you for a brand new left knee in Jesus name. Jesus name. Completely whole. Completely whole. And you've been diagnosed. Someone else has been diagnosed with uh, with something having to do with a baby that's in your womb right now. Hmm. They diagnosed that baby to be, I, I believe the diagnosis was possibly downs <laughs> or mental disorders. That baby's being healed. Jesus. Right now in Jesus name, brand new. The doctor's report will be astounding. <laughs> Lord, we thank you. We love you. Yes. Lord. We love you. We give you glory. Yes. We give you honor. Jesus, thank you. thank you. Father, I ask you for an overwhelming 
heart cry of expectancy. Yeah. The hunger, the hunger of expectancy that God, you would make people hungry again. You yes. would make people expect again. God, thank you. Like a little child on Christmas evening. Yes. Yes, Lord. Going to bed with that anticipation anticipation that something great is coming. Yes. Father, I thank you that these people would wake up with that same expectancy every morning and Jesus would be their gift. Yes. God, you're so good. Yes. We love you. We give you honor and praise. Lord, thank you. I see screws uh, in the right side of your back being removed right now in Jesus' name and a metal plate that you had put in because of uh, it has to do something with, with an accident, but also brittle bone mm -hmm. stuff. Lord, thank you for wholeness thank you. in Jesus' name that you'd remove that completely. Mm -hmm. We love you. We give you glory. Father, thank you for wholeness. Yes, Lord. I thank you for your brightness, for your love coming in and completely overwhelming depression. Yes, Lord. Fear would be cast out Jesus. in Jesus' name. Lord, thank you. Thank you. Gosh, I just see you getting a God hug. Literally, like right now, that God literally is wrapping his arms around you, saying, I have you. Father, we thank you. We give you glory. Thank you. We love you. We love you. Yes. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Mm. Lord, we thank you for complete healing from the top of the head to the bottom of the feet. Yes. And everyone watching, whether it's live or whether it's in time, over time, I'm saying whether you watch it today or you watch it a year from now, yes. healing Jesus. is the same. In Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord. Brand new. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Oh, man, that was so powerful. I feel such a mm. richness of the glory of God here in my, uh, my room. Oh, thank you so much for doing that. Yeah. Matthew chapter 6, verse 6. Jesus speaks to us about prayer. And he says, when you pray, go into your most private room and closing the door, pray to your Father who sees in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you in the open. This actual text is what the entire course is going to be driving home. We must spend time with God. We're going to talk practically about how to experience Him, experiencing and enjoying God from the scriptures. These things have changed my life, and I know the Lord will change yours as well.